inflamed by your hunger, we draw near to your excellent majesty. And we ask, O oh God, that you strengthen us with might by your spirit in the inner man. Grant, O oh God, that the least among our numbers will be as strong as David. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bible, you may wish to turn to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. You may wish to turn your Bible. Isaiah chapter 26, beginning from verse 15. Thou hast increased the nations, O Lord, thou hast increased the nation. Thou art glorified. Thou art removed it far unto all the ends of the earth. Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Like, a, like as a woman with child that draweth nigh the time of her delivery is in pain and cried out in her pang, so have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child, we have been in pain, and we have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. These people realized that God was increasing the nation. When they saw the sign of prosperity, they turned back to God in repentance. And they began to pour their prayer unto God in repentance in view of what they had seen. That God was still capable of raising, of increasing, and of blessing. The repentance that they initiated was a repentance that was born out of the wrong factor. Somewhere along the line, they felt they were impregnated by the Spirit of God, just like many believers feel as though God had moved upon their heart and furnished a substance as a proof of the fact that he is dwelling in covenant with a people. So these guys, they had all the emotions of bed pangs, all the emotions of the pains of delivery. But it came to pass that when the delivery time came, it was wind that they gave birth to, indicative of the fact that there was no substance. You know, yesterday our subject was the substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So several people had motions as if there was substance and they went through gestation, went through the sequence, went through the motion. It was as if it was labor pain. It was when delivery time came that it became obvious that there was nothing, no substance in view. And I've watched a lot of people. Time had come. You know, a musician, a singer, sang a song the other time. The difference between you and I is time. As if time in itself has the ability to deliver. So many people have gone through the motions of time and even through the motion of big pangs. It was at the delivery bed that it was obvious that God did not impregnate them with any substance. It was wind. Now this is the story. He said, we have been with child, we have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. That's number one. There was no substance. So the time didn't make any difference. It's only a man that has substance by the spirit that time will vindicate. This one's brought forth wind. That's number one. Number two, he said we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Our faith has not produced any result. There are no people that were delivered by our hands. Our relatives are still in poverty. Meanwhile, there was hope that when you rise, something will happen in the family. They waited for long, and people that waited died. It was wind. 
Now, I'm telling you, are you, are you with me? I'm telling you, I'm telling you the kind of thing that happens when men don't have substance. No deliverance is wrought. Time passes and it doesn't translate to fulfillment and destiny. He said, we, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. The Goliaths of our time that are bragging and boasting and insulting God, you lived in your own generation and you became old and those inhabitants were still standing. This scripture draws us to a point where we need to investigate what you think you have received from God. The other day, are you with me? I was in the office and a pastor came. The pastor said, the Holy Ghost spoke. Spoke 14 years ago. But it's just this morning I realized the meaning. <laughs> and the meaning of what he said is this is the ministry that God wants me to labor it took me 14 years to realize this so I told him you are welcome I called Chief Donatus I said Chief Donatus put this pastor on a six months prayer program he's still yet to report <laughs> he's yet to report I said just drill him for six months said that is a, that is what he wants to do and he has not reported in almost six years there was no substance no substance so we don't need to wait till tomorrow there's no substance in the spirit right now because if God has impregnated you a pregnant woman can't live a normal life she likes pillows pillows she will gather pillows. you see your life will be adjusted to accommodate what has impregnated you Faith is the substance. And if there's substance that the Holy Spirit is responsible for, it will produce results with time. So it's only a man that has a substance that is working in his spirit that time will vindicate this one. This guy brought forth wind. It means initially, even though he was heavily coated with church language, over time, it was evident that he was pregnant with nothing. Now, the first noble thing you will do for yourself this year, and the reason for which I want to structure this teaching, is to give you an indication of what faith is. Because all of us claim we are working by faith. All of us here. Somebody like that even took off like a tornado those days on campus and refused to finish. He said, God appeared. I met him 10 years later. He said he made a mistake. Because he brought forth wind. When the gestation period was accomplished for the production of that which was concealed from human view, which was at work in the privacy of his heart, when that time came, it was wind. Another cycle of utter confusion. Just because... Men refuse to deal with God. Hallelujah. At this age in my life, I believe I'm too old to make some critical mistakes. So I will stay on my knees and wait until the Holy Ghost does a definite thing in my life. All the time you'll be running. What, what does Abraham do? You say, I'm going to Abba, I'm going to Abba, I'm going. And after five years of going through the oscillatory motion, you just realize that your beard is white. And white hair has come. And yet, the inhabitants of the land have not fallen. And no deliverance has been wrought in your life, through your life in the earth. So because there is a possibility of someone thinking is impregnated by the Holy Spirit and being so confused, such that he's even going through labor motion, expecting that something will come out, only for him to discover that it was wind that he was carrying. Because of that kind of possibility. I want us to run an investigation of the texture of the true substance that the Bible calls faith. 
so that you will not be a victim of this cycle of futility that is revealed in this scripture. It was when we finished from school many years ago. That's 20 something, 20, something, 20, years, 20 years ago or so. That's when we discovered that our certificate did not have as much authority as we thought. I'm talking to you, those of you that are still in school, you, are, you, are, you think that the moment I finish, there's nothing out there. <laughs> nothing out there. In fact, the federal government has publicly spoken in parables that they don't have the funding for the budget that was articulated for 2021 fiscal year. Somebody is planning and allocating funds and the funds are not available. Three weeks ago, I saw the mop-up strategy that the Minister of Finance wanted to advance. If there's, your account is dormant, <laughs> the, the, the federal government will mop it up as, as a borrowing strategy. They will borrow by force so as to make up the gap in the budget strategy for the 2001 experiment. It is that kind of a system you are trusting God that when you come out with a certificate, it will be like a miracle wand. I, I have been there, so there are no miracles after graduation. What you will face will be stark reality of wind. So the best place to begin your journey is to stay with God until his spirit in pregnancy. When I was in final year, I was in my room. I stayed with a preacher at some point. So he told me that the reason why I was waking up every morning to pray, I wake up at five o'clock, run away to the place of prayer. He said the reason why I was doing that was because I had a prayer ministry. That he doesn't have a prayer ministry. That he has a word ministry. Michael Selly Kapakamayat. The word. That was the day he, he showed me his ministry secret. All the messages he wanted to preach for one year were prepared in a sack. He showed me that sack. That, not, that this sack contains... That if he has a meeting, he will just pray in tongues and pick one of the messages from the sack. And my Kapakamayat. When we were still on campus, it was not obvious that any of us was making a mistake until the gestation period was accomplished. In the fullness of time, I got employed in Abuja. We did two years of training. I got posted to Makodi Depot, started saying somewhere in Wadata, and then we became somewhat neighbors. The ministry was preparing for which the sack had started. Because he even refused to go for youth service because he was in a hurry to explode with intercontinental ballistic missile <laughs> from the sack level. I met him six years later after the unveiling of the sack. His, the church was still in the primary school and he was shouting. Well, it was one of the messages from the sack. He went and was shouting with. <laughs> then after shouting, he branched my house and asked that I should help solve some of his problems, which I did gladly. But you see, it was wind. There was nothing. You know, we, we are so old in church that we understand church language, how faith people talk. It's well, it's well. Now, the reason, oh my God. We are here today to find out whether it's well. <laughs> because this man told the true story of his life. He said, we went through the bed pans. We thought that something would come out, but at the end of the day, what was it? We. After that guy ran that church for 10 years, he closed it down and took off. I've not seen his brake light till now. There was another one again that started like that. After three years, the church didn't change, but the name changed, so the signboard changed. After two years again, the name changed, the signboard changed again. So the name changed three times, and then very soon, everything closed. You see, it's wind. 
doesn't have substance. It didn't begin with the Holy Ghost. It began with mental assent, a desire. You can't change the world with a desire. You need to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, faith is the substance. So we're investigating for substance. Are you still with me? I remember those days we went a training in Calabar. In the office, they sent us to Calabar for a training. And during the break time, somebody came with the news. Hey! A Fidelity Bank is giving us a loan. Anybody that wants a loan, 20 million. Hey! So one guy stood up and said, what do we do with his own money? That he is going to Finland. <laughs> See, don't laugh. <laughs> He is going to Finland. That's the home of stockfish. That is going to get two containers of stockfish. And that they would have paid for it in Lagos before it, it, the product comes. People were talking. And I told them, I don't have what to do with 20 million, so I will not collect it. They say, you're a bushman. You're a terrible. The whole gist finished by cursing me. You are, you are, you are backward. Two years later, they all collected the loan. None of them did what they said they would do. Satan showed up. You know, in that dis- <laughs> in the discussion, they didn't factor Satan into the matter. That a good idea cannot conquer. Satan will drain it. You need something that is spiritual, that is born of God. It's only such as is born of God that can overcome the world. The man that said he was going for stockfish, oh, Boroko, that man <laughs> is in debt. <laughs> As we are talking now, he's in debt. So the, mo- the moment they took the loan, Central Bank changed his, her policy, and then the interest rate was modified. And it was modified five times that year. Satan was looking for people that he will engage in slave trade. <laughs> but because the thing was not born of God, it was a good idea. May you not be a product of a good idea. Darkness will show you that there's no authority in a good idea to change anything. When I hear motivational preachers preach and they say, an idea rules the world. Ask that person preaching how many ideas he has generated. Ask him. Because I've seen people that came to teach in, in Lagos Bible School, uh, business school, that have never run business before. They have statistics, they have um, algorithms, they have patterns, they have how to monitor. They themselves have not practiced. If your life is a cartoon, you can, you, can, you can operate with those figures that those people in Lagos business school give. But if you want to do the real life, you need faith. And faith is substance. It took two years for those people that called me a Jew in that conference to understand why I refused to take the loan. Two years. Because when I probed into heaven, God says, he's not giving me loan. So that was not up for discussion. It took two years to see the wisdom in that decision. The old Boroko man is still servicing debt to you now. Well, the Lord will help us. We want to mitigate against the possibility of bringing forth wind. So let us turn in our Bibles quickly. We are going to use Abraham's life as a case study since the Bible calls him the father of faith. All the ingredients of faith should be of functional in his story. So we'll take our time to look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And the aspects of that chapter that have to do directly with Abraham will be our course of study for the night. Hebrews chapter 11. From verse 17 to 19. That's the first le- lesson. Just to prove to you whether what you claim you have is substance or not. 
and to bring you to a point where you are so helped that you won't need time to reveal that what you are impregnated with is wind. Hallelujah. It's not good to learn by experience because if you learn by experience, there's a waste of time involved and you cannot remanufacture time. It's good to learn by the Holy Ghost. People that are still using the adage, experience is the best teacher of failures. Is that clear? All right. This is the first testimony. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Now, this is not normal obedience. This is God telling you to kill your son, your only son. No woman in this house will be able to do this conveniently. But how was it that it was natural for Abraham to respond to this requirement of God? So we are going to probe into the back end of the software to find out what was going on in Abraham's heart that made it convenient for him to prosecute this kind of obedience that is unnatural. Are you still with me? All right. So next verse. Let's see the back end. Of whom this Abraham was talking about, God has previously spoken to him that all the promises he gave to him as a person, it was in Isaac that those promises will find expression. And Isaac was the one that God named to be the individual that will continue in the lineage of the covenant that God has bestowed upon him. So it was like a contradiction. If you look at this instruction, giving the background of the fact that Isaac was the one that was named as Abraham's seed to continue his generation. This instruction was a mighty contradiction. And there was no way you could process it in your mind that it would make sense. So how is it that Abraham was able to respond with so much grace? Verse 19 is my, this is the back end of the software. Now, the word accounting there is in ancient English, which you will not know the meaning by reading it. Because you will think it is the kind of accounting you read in school. That word is logizomai, logizomai. Now, there are two words there. One is logic. The logic of God. There was a different ground of logic. Now, let me, let, me, let me check my lexicon and read it out for you. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Log. Gizomai, L-O-G-I-Z-O-M-A-I. Anyone that has a strong, exhaustive concordance can verify my claim of the use of that word in the lexicon. In fact, the pilot number, just in case you want to trace it, is G3056, Logizomai. These are the arrays of meanings you can draw from that word first it means to reckon second it means to account third it means to compute fourth it means to calculate what this scripture is saying is that God through the workings of his spirit stay with me stay with me please stay with me through the workings of his spirit in the life of Abraham, gave Abraham a different line of logic. This logic was a product of an inner understanding of the workings of God that God imparted to Abraham in the privacy of his spirit. Because when you look at the instruction that God was asking him to fulfill, it was not logical. When we reach 6.30, you come, you come with me. Okay? 6.30. I'm seeing a light here. There's a light that is, is been coming. So we'll investigate it later. 
He said, accounting or logizomai that God was able to raise him up. That means this man had a different, he had access to a different scope of knowledge, of the knowledge of God. His knowledge of God formed a different ground of logic. This faith was prosecuted on a higher ground of logic, which was drawn from an understanding of the workings of God. This was the logic. The logic was that God was able to raise him up, one, from the dead. So this guy had experienced God to the point where he knew God had the ability to raise his son up from the dead. So it was not a big thing for God to request him to kill his son because God had the ability to raise his son from the dead. A different ground of logic came into manifestation that supported his faith life. Are you, are you still with me? Good. This logic, I want to give it a name. This is what we call the inner knowledge of reckoning. Let me explain why I use the word reckoning. It's still ancient English. That word reckoning in ancient English is what we translate to accounting in modern day English. And accounting happens to be the only thing that man can do accurately. If I tell a story and I ask you to tell the story, you are likely to undertell it or overtell it. And most times you overtell it. Because I've ever heard a story I told before, and when I heard it in the reverse action, when you the the <laughs> the story was a mystery. If I paint a portrait, a picture, and I give you to reproduce it, you can't reproduce it exactly. Some strokes are missing or some strokes are added. But in accounting, you can deliver it the way it was. That's the reason for the use of that word. It's a relative of this word used here, logizomai, or reckon. Reckon as in the use in the book of Romans chapter 6. Verse 11. Hallelujah. Now, this is it. In accounting, if you debit 5,000, on the record on your statement of account, they'll, they'll put in the debit section, they'll put 5,000. It's exactly what you removed that is reflected that was removed. Do you understand that? Do you get that? So you can reflect, you can do accounting exactly the way it is. And I'm saying that your possibilities in God multiply on the strength of your knowledge of God. The risk you can take with God is tied to your knowledge of God. When you find a man that is willing to risk much for God, there is a depth of insight that God has afforded him that has formed the ground, the basis of a new form of logic. It's on the strength of that new form of logic that his obedience is reasonable. Do you understand that? But if you don't know that logic that God has given him through experience, you will, not, you will think he's mad because you are bereaved of the logic that he's operating with, which is a logic that was furnished by his experiential knowledge of God. Exactly. Maybe towards the end of this service, we'll do a practical. If the Lord, I will pray for five minutes and then see if God is willing to do practical. Then I will do something. If you don't know what I experience in my spirit, man, you can never do that thing. So the expression of your faith is proof of the fact that God himself came to give you education about himself. It is the strength of that education that forms a new basic basis of logic that makes your obedience reasonable. Exactly. Now, so in this your substance that faith is, are you are you here? There is an inner knowledge about God 
which forms the basic basis of your logic of obedience. So if I come to you and I see what you are doing and I question you, why are you doing this? You can always give, it, give me that logic as a proof of the fact that you have gone inner, into the inner chambers. Your, 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 the depth from which you are dealing with God is what is the result of that knowledge. And you can give me that knowledge. So faith is not blind. Faith is not non-intelligent. Faith is highly intelligent and prosecuted by an inner knowledge of God. The first ingredient of the substance that faith is is spiritual knowledge. An inner knowledge of God which is the basis of a new ground of logic. To someone else that doesn't have that logic and is looking as an onlooker from outside, he will call you mad. The reason why he calls you mad is because there's a gap in his knowledge. He doesn't have that logic that you are operating from. For you, it is, it is logically calculated that this is the result. Given that God is like this, this is, diff, this is an easy thing for God to do. And it is natural for you to respond. But someone that doesn't have that knowledge that you have cannot do what you did. The reason is because he doesn't have the knowledge of God that you have at the heart of faith is a personalized unveiling of the dimensions of God to the spirit of a man. You understand? You want to walk, you see Jesus, Jesus, they, 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 they said, okay, the wind was boisterous and they woke Jesus up from the ship and he stood up and spoke to the wind instantly. He didn't have time to review the matter. He spoke instantly and the wind became still. Do you ask yourself, how did he do that? There was a logic. A logic that made it the most natural thing to do given the knowledge of God that Jesus had. If Jesus did not do what he did, he would have questioned him whether he has lost the logic. That's number one. Your faith must have a personalized knowledge which forms the ground of your new basis of logic that makes obedience natural. So don't take off like a tornado. The extent to which you are going to rise, the degree to which you have had that logic. That logic is a function of spiritual knowledge. When God comes to enlarge your scope of possibility by giving you a first-hand knowledge of his ability and his workings. You can't walk in faith if you have no personal knowledge of God. Exactly. So faith is not a cliche. I've seen so many people trying to conjure themselves into faith by confessing, confessing, confessing. You will finish confessing for 30 days and you will be without logic. Confession doesn't produce that logic. It is an intrinsic encounter of the Holy Spirit moving upon your heart to administer spiritual knowledge. When that knowledge is administered, your new sense of logic shifts. And on the strength of that new ground, you can perform works of obedience that will look strange to mortal men. There is a knowledge element, a spiritual knowledge element that is behind every act of it. I know if I don't do practicals today, you will not believe me. So, but I will tell you what I know that will make me do what I will do. Don't expect to do anything if you don't have spiritual knowledge about the workings of God. You read com computer science? You, you, no, no, sit down, sit down. I'm already standing. If I give you a computer and I ask you to do some things, you are not likely to be able to do it. Because the person that they sent to me, a graduate of computer science, I said, have you ever worked on Excel before in, in the office? He said, menini Excel, menini. I go sell it, kamis, oboro sima. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. <laughs> there are some things. Yes, you read computer science. It's not everything in computer science that you know. 
So you need to go beyond the lecture to go into a personal adventure to now get knowledge that only you found because you researched. Only researchers, explorers of God, stumble on knowledge that makes them exceptional. Behind every act of faith, every feat of faith is an understanding of the workings of God. And if you lack it, your life will produce wind. You can have all the church cliché. You know how to talk in church as if you are highly spiritual. It's after 10 years we'll know that you were speaking from wind. <laughs> may, you not, <laughs> may you not be a comical figure like Batman. <laughs> Superman. You only exist in comics. But if you are going to come into real life, you need faith. An evil day came upon the church when we learned faith languages. Those days, those languages were products of encounters, things that moved on the hearts of men, and it changed their confession, their vocal cord. Today, we intellectualize it. So keep saying it, keep saying it. Keep saying it. Oh my God. It's not about what you say, it's about whether the spirit moved. It's whether the spirit moved. And it's not reading the scriptures that brings faith. It is the voice of the Holy Ghost that imparts faith. When God speaks, things are created. Part of what is created by his speaking is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Number two. Hebrews 11.11. 11. Through faith, Sarah also herself received strength to conceive seed. This was the woman that was in menopause. This was the woman when she was a, a teenager was confirmed barren by the gynecologist. And she had also entered into menopause. It was impossibility raised to power two. How is it that this woman could still believe was it not e easier for her to have had a miracle when she was 18, when she was 35? In order for God to show that he's God, he allowed her to enter into menopause too. When most gynecologists, professor of gynecologists, would have sent her home, sent her back. This is one of the limits of medical science. But the Bible says that she received strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past the age. So the menopause factor was highlighted. There's something stronger than menopause. There's something stronger than the cause of nature. There's something stronger than death. There's something stronger than what is natural. As long as it's natural, we can change it. If you know the way of faith. Hebrews 11 was written... To reveal that we can change everything that is natural. The Bible says she received strength to conceive seed. Even when she was past the age. What was, the, was going on at the back end of this computer? He said because she judged him faithful who had promised. This was a revelation of God's fidelity. That God will not speak to you in the night. And change his voice in the light. This woman knew God's fidelity. And on the strength of that, she judged him faithful. And was given the ability to conceive seed. Even when she was past the age. Her conception threw medical school into confusion. They had to go back to their textbooks and adjust it to accommodate Sarah. Because all the things they taught for hundreds of years was invalidated by a woman that arose from menopause to conceive. If you don't know God, it's only those that know God that know that he's faithful. Because one of the things that the devil will come preach to you, when it's as if your miracle is taking time to come, he will preach to you that God is not faithful. That you, you, you were foolish to have believed him. And many hearts 
have found meaning in those utterances of deception. The Bible says, cast not away thy confidence, for therein lies a great recompense of reward. Some of my brothers here, I stood with them while they were on campus. And you might find one not doing so well academically. All right? I stood with them. And then that same one graduates through the eye of the needle. Then that same one, because he, does, he didn't give up on God, then you now begin to see how God begins to shape somebody's life. I've seen people that schools called dollars. Educational systems call them right off. And when they hit the floor for real destiny, they had capacity to prosecute. Not because they had anything changed. What changed was their knowledge of the Holy One. She judged him faithful. Faith has a knowledge of God's fidelity. Faith is not blind, neither is faith a, a, um, a counterpart of mental slot. God will increase the bar of spiritual knowledge in your heart and that is what is going to increase this, the supplements of possibilities. You don't need your father to help you. You don't need your mother to help you. What you need is faith in a God that cannot lie. The Bible says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we may have a strong consolation. If you know God's fidelity, the resultant effect is a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to take hold of the hope that is before us. You can take hold of those things, those hopes. You can take hold of them in God. Because you understand his fidelity. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Are you with me? Number three. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 and 9. By faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which should after receive for an inheritance obeyed. Meanwhile the question you are not seeing here is where because God called him to go to a place but never gave him the address of where he was going every normal man should sit with God and say where am I going why is it that Abraham obeyed because you would have been stuck with the question where and waiting for God to explain meanwhile we live by his instructions and not by his explanation God may not be willing to explain but Abraham is set out even without an explanation but you were looking for explanations and your day passed. So how is it that Abraham was able to go on without an explanation? Meanwhile, according to the scheme of things of heaven, it was on that trip that he will find the place that will become his inheritance in the earth. So all sons, and I hope you know your life is an expression of Abraham. Every one of us. Because he's the one that pioneered this way. So as you your work with God is going to look like the pattern that his life has produced. If Abraham had to leave home in order for him to enter into uncharted territory to seek a place that will be inheritance for him, you will leave home too. That's your comfort zone that is within. And if God wants to help you, people will die in your family. So that you can learn how to walk by faith. Huh. I know the People won't say amen for that one. They say, Kai, <laughs> pastor, don't come. This one's too hard for us. I'm telling you my story. My dad loved me so much, I wouldn't have followed God like this. Yes. And when he was struck, oh, Jesus. Meanwhile, the reason why I decided to seek God the way I did was because I wanted to be able to fight what killed him. Because I knew the thing that killed him would look for me. So he wanted to take me to the United States for his surgery. And he never lived long enough to take me there. Meanwhile, I prayed and God said he will never heal my eyes. That this face will be like this until my breath is taken from me. So even though I have the ability to go to the United States for his surgery now, 
I will never do it. And I don't want to go deep into that encounter. What resulted to that knowledge? Are you with me? Now, the Bible says that this man went. He didn't know where he was going. So the next verse now gives us the spiritual knowledge behind that level of obedience. Say, by faith he sojourned. In the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, as with him of the same promise. The question here to ask is when? Because even in the days of Jacob, the fullness of God promised him had not yet come. Do you understand that? The first question was where? The second question here was what? When? So how did he defy the question where? And defy the question when? It was because he had an assurance. God never sets any man of faith out without giving him a double dose of assurance. So there is a currency in which faith exists. It's a currency of inner assurance. An assurance that lasts the test of time. It's so bright within your heart that nothing can quench. Circumstances come and go, but the assurance is renewed. Anytime you hit your knees to pray, he said, I have not forgotten that word. He kindles it back. So your life becomes like the life of Abraham. A man that is full of assurance and that is the only reason, the only ticket for his journey. Didn't know where he was going but he was assured in his heart that he will get there. When God wants to help a man he ministers assurance into his heart. One day I called my wife. I said, why did you even follow me? Because those were the days when I was a rugged man. Oh, you don't understand. You met a good man. I don't shake sisters. And I don't laugh. And I was slim like an HIV victim. My belly was flat to the back. You will not understand what I said why did you you know what she had an assurance don't journey until you have an assurance it's a currency of this order of life as long as you are lacking in assurance it means that your journey is not funded you will not reach home <laughs> he was assured as long as the spirit of God still has time to furnish assurance, it means you are on course. Keep journeying. You should never be weary because your eyes will see the salvation of God which he had prepared before the face of all people. What God began in the privacy of your heart will become an advertisement before the face of all people. The more global the visibility you are going to gain will be, the more the gestation period of that which you carry. If it's something you hear today and it happens tomorrow, it's going to be a small thing. It will be like, like a miracle of 2000, the one you will use in the night to chop a book. That's the one you can believe today and in the night it has happened. But if it's something that will shake the world, you will carry that pregnancy for a long time. And God will not be so bothered as to give you explanations that will fill the void that is in your mind. In faith we learn how to work with our heart and many more times your understanding will be unfruitful. The longest distance is not from east to west. It's the distance between your heart and your mind. It is only when you begin to walk with faith that you will discover that your mind is on another latitude and you need to leave it behind. And learn how to walk by your heart. And if you are going to walk by your heart, you will not have all the details. But there's one thing you will never lack if you are a man of faith. It's called assurance. Kabule. Emahaito. On my wedding day, I went to greet my relatives that followed me to the place. And they said, Kai! If we had known, we would not have allowed you to come this far to marry me. 
It means they didn't believe in it. But you know what? I had assurance. Ten years later, the same person that made that, that comment came to me for counseling. His marriage had a problem. Him that knew where to go. There was no assurance to support him. But here was I. That place he felt was a bad place. With the assurance I had was all I needed. And time told the story of who was the champion. We walk by faith, the Bible says. Haven't understood this. We walk by faith and not by sight. Everything you see is a lie. It's a lie. Oh, I remember my friend, a pastor. He brought a girl that was as beautiful as a goddess. I said, he has found a wife. She was impeccable. You know, I did art, so I understand symmetry. That was the very image of the agent that this devil sent to drown his destiny. <laughs> what you see with your eyes is a lie. Wise people have learned how to receive the testimony of the spirit. You might say, oh no, she's not my stuff, she's not my kind. Follow that assurance and keep that your kind. Where did you learn the kind? In the University of Agriculture. That's where you... Then, five years after you marry, a prophetic anointing will now come upon that woman's life. And it's by her sight that your life will be delivered. All of that package was in the assurance you received that you were quarreling about. That hey, The height is not... Go with assurance. It's not a game of height. Oh, Camino Selly, Akuma, Akara. <laughs> no man of faith will be left home just like Abraham had to journey into the unknown, the uncharted territory. Nobody in your family has come where you are. It's a man of faith. And when God really wants to do business, you are alone. Make sure you pioneer that pathway. So that whenever your family is remembered, your name will be high or top there. It will be because of you that they will be known. Cast not away your confidence. The Bible says, for therein lieth a great recompense of reward. Now, this is practical time. I want to show you that there are some things you will never do if you have no access to spiritual knowledge. Raise that volume. Can we sing that song, or choir? See, you know what? Don't put the mic like this. Sing into it. Let's just hear your voice. Don't cause problem. Don't cause problem. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's try. Now, I want to shift from from a teacher to become a, a prophet in the next five minutes. Then I can teach you by the prophetic anointing. Okay, go on, go on, go on. could ever wonder. My faith will beat me stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without fault. Me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would beat me stronger in the presence of my Savior. I saw in the spirit 
and it was like a mist, a cloud. When I saw it from afar, it looked dark, but when I looked, it was bright. And it began to descend, and I was wondering, Lord, what is this? This is the understanding I'm having from what I'm seeing that is going on in my heart. Do you understand that? And the Lord makes me to understand that this cloud is called the spirit of supplication. Listen. In which someone in this congregation will glide on this spirit for seven days in order for you to be brought into the place where light is. You've been laboring in darkness. And as I speak, as I speak, if I'm saying the truth, the hand of God will descend upon the person. Continue. I saw in the spirit I saw a lady 13 years old come how old are you no I'm looking for 13 can you because I want to show you people how that lady was is there any lady here 13 I saw a lady 13 years old and this lady was sacrificed was sacrificed for the wealth of a certain family. One of the sons or daughters of this family is here today. A lady was sacrificed, and I can see her skeleton and the utterance that she made before her death has inflicted a terrible curse upon that household. And the Lord has sent me this evening to break the cut. Listen. If it's true. Because it may not be true. <laughs> if it's true. The Lord will show me a sign. Father. If there is anyone. From that family. That is present here. Tonight. I ask. From my right hand side. To my left hand side to the outside of the hall let your anointing descend and show me that individual so that I will be able to bless that family if anyone that is under that situation is okay the, the angel is coming if anyone that is under that situation any family here implicated by that is present okay it's coming stronger it's coming stronger if any family, anyone here whose family is implicated by what I say, I ask Lord, stretch forth your hand through this congregation. Stretch forth your hand and show me that individual. Show me that man or that woman that is in such a family. Show me that boy or that girl. Let your hand be stretched. Holy Ghost. You know that if you don't move, there is no way I will know. And so I plead with you that you stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. And let the anointing descend upon that person. Let the anointing descend upon that individual. Let the anointing descend upon that individual. Holy Spirit, I ask that you help me. Help me and let your anointing descend upon that individual. In the name of Jesus. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Yes. Now, let's, let's interview you first. Give me a mic, a microphone. 
There's a curse in that family. So can you help us find out? Now give her the break. Okay, okay, fine now. sacrifice as you have uh, mentioned through word of knowledge and um, she couldn't ascertain the particular age but the generation that uh, actually carried that, the sacrifice of that virgin they prospered, no prospered, they prospered and, and they the were rest. really strong and after, the, after that, that generation passed away the subsequent generations have been wallowing in poverty now, listen, now. Listen. you are here and it happens to be that uh, in the days of your grandparents some of your grandparents were alive and you met some of them and they were old and stricken in age and then after that generation passed the next generation that followed they all began to die early Now, you see, God sent me to you. Faith. There is a knowledge element of faith. There's something that have moved over my spirit that imparted spiritual knowledge. The knowledge was so strong. Are you with me? That it was, it, it generated a new sense of logic. What was happening in my spirit became more real than what I could see with my eyes. And even though there seemed to be no evidence with my eyes, I could not deny what I could see in the spirit. That's the way of faith. There's something superior to your eyes, superior to your ears. It's the working of God. Oh my God. See, I see two angels from heaven. See, and they are descending right now into that grave to bring the remains so that the curse can be blotted out. The women that are hanging can now be married. Yes. That goodwill can now prosper. Can you pray for this lady and use her as a point of contact? I see the two angels there 
poured something like milk, whitish. The closest I can make of it is milk. And they asked you to walk on it. From this day, you will find grace. And the things that were difficult for you, it will become easy because the hand of God is upon your life. The circle of delay that had bedeviled the entire landscape, you come out of it this moment. And the Lord will cause your face to shine. In the name of Jesus. So I bless you. Hey, I could say, man, que aso se compela, she me no copres cavara masubre, elanto seco salato kunda hi no mala, mantos ebre mene curia, pri babo se cabasanta babori macale. Oh, we give you glory. I see in the spirit. Someone here is about to be given a car. I see the car. It's coming. It's coming. Before the first got out this year, you will, will see the manifestation. Someone here is about to be given a car. Se la manto scuve sa matale, rasque su se uge babuda, prima sale bo compres cavata marceli cotala, mento eco mali, shekla prasque, brusque va vale monda, isco beze na ante culia, jama cunda sempre scofete mesco tabalato si la mantene. I come in Sunday, Braske Bokura means a Kailo Kose, Mambri Kafa Santa Babola Masali. Oh, we give you glory, we give you praise. Milabondes, Kemina Tokeba, Preskofe Lamatai, Shema Lendora, Priska Patakunda Barata Kusketamina, La Hai Soseleke Preske Barute Mazeli. Oh my God. It's already time out, but I want to take 15 minutes. Anywhere you are, you can speak in tongues. Quiet. Let it come from inside. Let it come from your heart. Let it come from your heart. Oh, great things are determined of the Lord. Great things are determined. Great things are determined of the Lord. Imoseli mora, jekom pela skito kelo bonde, jamina kuria basketo koma ante premina sura makapela. Oh yes, great things are de. Coming of the Lord. Sabobo mo sentoria mama. Sabobo si ko sentoria bramina kura baba satan. Seli kompe la muka salima. Ala 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I just felt the Lord touch my head now. And that means that someone can have a miracle. You can have a miracle. You can have a miracle. For tonight, let's limit it to a miracle of healing. You can have a miracle, you have a right to be healed right now. I'm going to pray for the next uh, seven seconds. For those of you online, you are part of what is happening. If there's anyone that is sick, the person can be healed right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The person can be healed right now. So you have, if you have any health condition, that you are trusting God for healing, you can put your hand where that sickness is right now. Those with stomach issues, stomach upsets, stomach pains, those with hearing issues, those with spiritual issues, you know that the symptoms are not medical, but this is the sign of an attack. You can put your hand right there. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. So put your hand there quickly. There's a pain on your body. It has been there for a long time. It will go now. You have a hearing situation, a hearing challenge. You can't hear very well from one of your ears. You can just touch the ear. Touch the ear as I pray. 
There's a pain on your body and it has been there for some time. It can go this now. Something wrong with your eyes. You can't see. You are losing sight. You can lay hands on the eyes. And just in case you use glasses, you can take them off and lay hands on the eyes right now. Because pains will go. Diseases will go. Father, in the name of Jesus. Can you stop praying? Just... That person that is still high in the spirit, you are wrong. It's time to receive now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of infirmity and I command the pain to begin to go. Spirit of infirmity, hear my voice. In the name of Jesus, I bind you. Blinding spirits, I bind you. I say be bound in the name of Jesus. Deafening spirits, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I command you to take your hands off those lives in Jesus' name. I command blinding spirits, take off those, those hands off those eyes in the name of Jesus. Now I command pains to begin to go. Internal pains and external pains. Swellings and growths begin to disappear, begin to disappear right now in the name of Jesus and I'm seeing someone that is had um, you are online you had an attack of anemia three days ago you had an attack of anemia that is a sickle cell crisis it happened three days ago and you are still recovering from the crisis and using medication but I see the hand of the Lord come into your room and the yoke of sickle cell it breaks this night the next time you run a test of your genotype it will no longer be SS now I command those eyes to begin to see I command those ears to begin to hear I command the pains to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I'm seeing a little child. About two years or three. Two years or three years. Just a little child. And that child. Always falls sick. In and out of sickness. About two years or three years. If the mother or the guardian of that child is here, you may wish to bring the child now. Bring the child now. There is this child about two years or three years that goes in and out of sickness. If the mother or guardian of that child is here now, you may wish to bring that child now. 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 Because the door will soon be shut. The door will soon be shut. One more time I repeat again. There is a child that was brought here. About two years. Three years old. I see this child going in and out of sickness. Now if you are the mother or the guardian of that child. Inside or outside. You may wish to bring that child now. This is the last call. Then let us pray then. Since the child is not here. You see the time has finished. You can't bring the child again. The, the, time, the time has finished. Now look, check your body quickly. Check your body quickly. Some people have been healed. About three people have been healed. Check your body. If you are one of the three people that have been healed, you can come to the front quickly. I have just five minutes. About three people have been healed. Three people have been healed. If you check your body, you will confirm it. About three people have been healed. Three, about three people. It can be more than three, but it can be less than three can be more than three but it cannot be less than three 
It can be more than three, but it cannot be less than three. If you notice that something has happened, there's a shift. Maybe one of your ears was not hearing properly, maybe, and now you can hear. You may wish to join them. There are three people that God has healed, at least three people. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly. Now listen. Sometimes, sometimes God does strange works and in this is strange works. If the window opens for your miracle and uh, you don't respond, the window closes. The preacher can't do anything about that. Right? No, it, it's powerless. You know, your estimation of preachers are too high. You know, the dispensation is consistent with what God makes available. Sometimes the window just closes. God can heal that child without asking the person to come. But when he says call, a window now opens. Many times people are not smart enough to enter into that window. And that's where there's a challenge. Yes, so tell us what happened quickly. Tell us what happened. We have five minutes to go. Sir, this is sir. She entered into this hall with a notable pain on her tummy. Extremely discomforting, but she said while prayer was made, there was a tangible experience of relief that she felt. That way. And Yahweh, your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Now, there's one of you here that God wants to. Yes, you came in to talk about a miracle, but the reason why I asked you to even come in the first place is because there's somebody among you that God wants to anoint. Hallelujah. This is there is somebody among you that God wants to anoint. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, that your hand might come strong upon that vessel that you want to anoint. And uh, let there be empowerment. Let there be grace. Let there be impartation. Let there be empowerment. Let there be grace. Let there be impartation. Let there be empowerment. Let there be grace. Let there be impartation. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Let the unction begin to multiply. Let the unction begin to multiply. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Yes, it comes so strong right now. It comes so strong. So strong. I sense it. So strong. Holy Ghost. Perfect the impartation. Perfect it. Thank you. So you are blessed. Grace is given unto you. Yes, let's find out what, what's wrong. Yes. See, there has been laboring under the weight of migraine for the past three okay, days. Okay, migraine. You just felt a, a release. Is permanent in Jesus' name. She had an issue, a very strong waist pain. Okay, waist it's pain. Gone. Okay, waist pain is gone. If I touch you, you can go. Yes. And this sister had a growth in her mouth. A growth in her mouth. With, with, or, or, on account of which she couldn't chew on that part of her mouth for for over see, a year. For like a year now. And at the instance of the prayer, the pain was gone. Pain went. Thank you, Jesus. This sister had a very sharp pain at the left side of her breast. At the instance of the prayer, pain was gone. Thank you, Lord. Let the miracle be perfected. In the name of Jesus. This sister had 
an eye condition that had lasted for three years on account of which he couldn't read the particular characters of later. Okay, give her a Bible to read for us. While prayer was made, the now, situation see, was arrested. Power is not shout, right? It's not when you raise your voice. See, there's somebody here that has been having some pain around the region of your spinal cord that God healed and the person has refused to come out. It has to do with your spinal cord. Your spinal cord. You were healed while I prayed. The pain left while I prayed. So you may wish to join them. Your spinal cord at the back. Yes, the, she's trying to read now. Can you can you read it? You can see it. Uh, read less here. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word. So you see, this is an eye condition, an, an eye condition of, three of three years. She can see now. It is permanent in the name of Jesus. Yes, not the Bible. This sister came in here with a very strong pain right inside her right rib cage. Okay. It was lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Someone healed on your spinal cord. There's a pain that you have been carrying. I'm still waiting for you. This is the second call. After the third call, I will stop. Yes, 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 yes. What, what is wrong there? He had, he had been under the scourge of toothache for almost a week now. At okay. the instance of the prayer, the issue was arrested. It's permanent, yes? Our own case is a case that has to do with ulcer and the related pain for which she couldn't even sit comfortably during the course of the service and now it had been arrested. Yes, it is permanent. It's equally under the scourge of back pain which had been lifted. It is permanent. So, the, the, I'm, I'm waiting for spinal cord first. She is the person that is implicated by the word of knowledge concerning the matter of the spinal cord. So why did you wait for the second call before you? You are see, you were saying, yeah, okay, we're see, they are adjusting to know whether it's true. I want to bless you this night. Is that possible? Oh my. permanent in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break the yoke. I break the yoke. I command pain. Leave her. I raise her. You remain. Okay. I'm going to do one. We don't finish one now. You remain two. Have you? The, the second one now for leg. Calm down. I hear you. The first time where you talk, I'm, I hear you. Hey. I say I hear him the first time. You don't talk him three times now. I put your hand where that pain is now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bruise the head of arthritis. Arthritis be gone. Let the pains melt. Let the pains melt. No, remove the hand. Leave hand there. Let it melt. Let it melt. Let it melt. 
in the name of Jesus. I command that pain to go in Jesus' mighty name. Mama, waka first. Waka go come, then look for the pain. Show me if it's still there. Yes, what's, yes, what's I think this is a very notable miracle. She had a ear problem Wait. since childbirth. She had an ear problem. Ma Mama, no go, no go. Ah. We never finish this thing. You won't run. Yes, tell us. She had what? It's an ear problem she had since childbirth. Okay. And on account of which the manifestation of it is pain, great pain in this side of her ear, the two sides of the ear. The pain migrated to this side. But during the course of the prayer, she said the situation had been arrested. So it was since you were born that you, you used to experience that pain? Three months. I started having the problem of um, ear pain. The both of them, it will come and go, come and go. But last month, this one, this side, it's pain me seriously every day, every day. But the cause of you said we should put the hand. So I just put my hand inside. So the pain mm, now. And I don't the feel any pain again. Can you celebrate this? Lord, we thank you for this miracle in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's true. See, some healing is taking place there. Yeah, they do them. Check them. They check them. They check them. Oh, yeah. Do like this. Make we see. Uh -huh. Lord, we give you praise. Let the break. Yes, let her be set free in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke on, on her life. Let her legs be released in the name of Jesus. Now, there's, there's a little anointing on my hand. Somebody will pick it up. Father, anyone whose hand is open, heart is open, release this anointing inside and outside. Anyone whose heart is open, release this anointing. So it's coming now. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Those of you online, you can receive also. Those online, Lord, if there's anyone whose heart is open, let this anointing be released in the name of Jesus. Now I ask tonight, oh God, that you bless your people. Let grace come upon your people in the name of Jesus.